on a stock I'm already watching. Um, but besides that, I'm not really looking at dilution on a daily basis or checking every stock I find. It's really kind of a opportunistic thing. Like if I find something has to do with do or a stock has to do has to do with dilution, then I'll look. But otherwise, I'm still trading the price action. I'm still looking for um, a first red day, regardless if there's dilution or not. So the first red day. So for example, so I know I, I remember you you mentioning you traded like AMC or maybe GME or something. So were you doing first red days? Were you looking for first red days when those things were going wild? Yeah, yeah. Specific, yeah, I specific. I mean, GME was way tougher because it was, I mean, that was the most insane mania I've seen where like celebrities were, were t- which were tweeting about it and stuff. Yeah. So I was like, oh, this is nuts. And I remember how GME happened. It wasn't even, it wasn't in my like my framework of how I understand my personal first red days because there's a lot of first red days that happen, but there's only certain ways that they happen that I can predict maybe relatively straightforward, you know, or, or not want to say easily, but I can understand them. Some red days to happen. I'm like, Oh, I had no idea that I didn't see that coming. Um, GME was more on the side of like, I didn't see that coming in terms of when it happened. Um, and also I think like every broker restricted it. So I didn't even, I'm, I had no FOMO missing it. Cause I don't think I could even short it anyway, but AMC was much more, much more my style. Um, I think that, I think that particular day was an overextended gap down, which is like Tani's favorite type of red day, um, which I, I do trade. I just consider it a type of red day or a, a type of entry different than a particular red day that I like. Like normally I like red days where I can short them going red for the first time, whereas overextending gap down, they're kind of already gapping down and opening red for the first time. So you kind of have to try to get short into a spike. And I think that was AMC's particular scenario. Um, but yeah, still, still same framework in my mind of, of this is how it should play in the morning. Um, and I think it did that. It sold off, you know, 15, 20% in the first hour or two, which is the, my, usually my sweet spot. Um, and, and yeah, so that's how that worked out. Awesome. Okay. So, so with these first red days, like AMC, you'll come up with a thesis before the market open of how it should play out. And then like, what, what is the main indicator? Like, would you short into like the initial panic after a certain percentage or are you looking for certain factors or indicators? Like what, what is the criteria for you to meet? Like, okay, this is a red day before it flips around. Um, So, so for me, at least on the front side, I I like stocks that are at least up a hundred percent. That's not a hard rule because um, there have been stocks held short that are only up 80 or stocks that are up 200, 300. Essentially, the high, the more extended, the better, just from a general perspective. Um, and I think AMC was up, what, from 13 or 15 up to like 60. So yeah. it was plenty extended. Um, it had the mania aspect of it. Like, again, even and again, even and some some reasons why I might show something that's not up uh, over 100 percent. If there's still like this over hype ish. Um, sentiment about it, right? If there's like this this overdone buying or overdone um, just perspective from like the market participants, then I know there's it's like a mini bubble. You know, there's a there's the there's this euphoria that can't last, and once it's over, if you can find when it's over in the price action or see it in the price action, um, it's a great leading indicator for for a red day. So something like. Um, I guess there's two examples. One is it, right. One is either if it gaps down, and if it gaps down, is it the first time it's gapped down? So there's there's so many like idiosyncrasies. But like, if a stock has never gapped down in its run up, and this is its first time gapping down, I have to now I have to trust the odds that a red day is coming. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes stocks do end up going back green, and that's when I would cut it. Um, but just from a standpoint of like, if it's gone three, four days in a row and every single day it's gapped up. And on the fifth day, it's gapping down right out the open. I have to assume statistically speaking, it's going to have a red day. Um, but then you have to look at things like, is it gapping down too big, right? If a stock is open down 20%, well, that's kind of like the red day I wanted. I would have loved to be short from red green and covered down 20%, not entered down 20%. So yeah. you have to really you know, <laughs> gain that experience of like, okay, is this a stock I want to short to a spike? Um, this is a stock only gapping down 5% and that's, I don't need a spike. I want to, I want to get short right out of the open because it could still panic 10%. Um, sometimes do I want to risk above red green? Cause there's a, a meaningful risk level from yesterday's price action and red green isn't really that, that meaningful. Um, all these little things, but that's essentially kind of the gist of, of a gap down strategy, um, which isn't my necessarily favorite. Cause again, I'm not a fan of, of trying to short into a spike. Cause in many ways you end up being, it's very easy to be full size on a, on a, on a, on a loss because you keep adding to a strength. And then once you're full size, if it, the stock's too strong, you end up just stopping out because it actually ends up going green. Um, versus if a stock kind of is super weak and you only put on a starter, 
and then it works, it's like, ah, I only have starter size. So um, that's de- definitely always been a struggle for, for gap downs, um, for overextending gap downs. My favorite type of red day is like a gap up. And, and these are more difficult because sometimes, right, if a st- same scenario, let's say a stock's gone up three, four days in a row and it's gapped, ever, gapped up every day. Well, what makes this, and say on the fifth day, it's gapping up. Well, how, how on earth do I know, right, it's going to be a red day? It just, it's gapping up like it always has. Um, some things I'll look for, and I, I learned this from, um, from Stephen Ducks, is looking for like a huge momentum shift. So, so say like, you know, every one of those days, it's, it's had a morning spike, but it's held its morning spike and then like consolidated and went higher. If on the fifth day, it has this huge morning spike, massive volume, but fails. I mean, gives up in its entire morning spike, but it's still up, say 10% of the day. It like spiked up to 20%, cr- got crushed and lost all its morning spike gains, but it's still green on the day. That would be enough of, of, a, of an indicator for me to be like, okay, this is a momentum shift. It hasn't done this before. you know. It, and it's almost similar to the gap down. I'm looking for something different. I'm looking, you know, the gap down on an overextended gap down strategy is the momentum shift because it's the first gap down and it's opening red. That like huge morning spike and then fail is also a different shift because if all the previous days it's held the morning spike, now it's different. Um, especially if it say it tries to spike again, it has like a, a higher low or a, a lower high, I should say, and then fails again. Um, you know, I use View App if it starts failing under View App, starts making a new morning low. All these things kind of start to align themselves. I'm like, okay, it's not red yet, but it's giving me enough to work with. Like it's worth it. I, I'm okay with taking a risk and, and putting these odds in my favor or letting these odds play out. Um, i guessing they're in my favor. And I will, I will end up taking a short into like a new morning low a day or on t- or into, if I want to take a starter and be aggressive into that, um, into that lower high or into that view app stuff. Um, all these different types of slowly entries, like, and like I said, like scaling in and out over PDT, that's one way I'll do it. Like I'll start in on, you know, the first lower high I'll scale in once we start failing view up. And then I might be full size by the time we make a new morning low. Um, and if we haven't paying too much, maybe I'll add on a red green. Like, so the, all these little areas are like, as the indicators keep piling on, I might continually start adding more and more in size. And then once all of them come together by that time, it's probably red in the day and I'll be full size and I'll, I'll let it, let it work from there. 